Hello and welcome to the Captain's Table. My name is Paul Berserker01, Batman Shelley, your humble host and space bartender at the Astro Pub and your facilitator here on the Captain's Table. This is a discussion uh, where we uh, kind of podcast talk show thing where we uh, talk about Star Citizen. Sometimes we do very general discussions, sometimes we do very specific ones, but I bring people from all over the Star Citizen universe to talk and hang out and chat about it. Today we've got a new face and a sort of new face um, uh, on, on, the, on the channel. Uh, we'll start with the, the sort of new face. Gal, who are you? What do you do in Star Citizen and where can they find you? Hello, well, I am Gal. I um, play Star Citizen occasionally, occasionally. And I would say my sort of niche is um, really, I, I like to do anything that um, involves interacting with other players, um, be it bounty hunting or um, medical rescues, stuff like that. That's my main focus. So like playing, playing the game with other people? Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm like I'm a multiplayer game. Oh, shock and horror. <laughs> uh, and then we've got... Uh, new, new to the to the channel, but not new to Star Citizen. You you know him, you love him, you've seen him, Mister Zero State. Who are you? What do you do in Star Citizen, and where can they find you? Uh, well, uh, I identify as an attack helicopter. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> 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 no, uh, I play a lot of Star Citizen. Uh, thousands of hours in it at this point. Been streaming it for like a lot for a couple of years. Um, really, I mean, just kind of gravitate towards pl either player interaction or just a pvp is a is a is a draw for me but um i really like the best moments i have are when like you're when voip is working right and you're like talking to somebody uh you meet somebody random and like you go on an adventure together or a guy has a bounty and then he explains his way out of it so you help him clear his you know just stuff like that i love the interaction <laughs> stuff of it i mean just like most people who play star citizen uh, i think the the best parts are when there's another player doing something that makes that enhances your experience is really cool so nice that's yeah uh, most of my gameplay events and community stuff from time to time but all right so um that's kind of the, the theme for today is going to be talking about gameplay star citizen as a game right now we'll talk a little bit about events in the future uh, uh after that you know events now and such but uh this kind of topic got brought up because of something that was said by Chris Roberts at, at the very beginning of CitizenCon this year, which was that Star Citizen averaged about 50,000 players per day this year with peaks of up to 130,000 on some days. So comparing, I compared that to Steam, and with those, ch uh, those charts, Star Citizen, if it were on Steam, would have had, would have been the, one of the top 20 played games on Steam with those, those statistics. And seeing a lot of people coming in and playing the game uh, made, got me thinking, that's a lot of people playing the game for a game that most of us would consider early access at best, if not a, just a demo at worst. So I wanted to talk about gameplay. What's, what, is, what works today? What, uh, what doesn't work? And then, you know, how would you talk with somebody about this game if you, if you were to tell someone who was a gamer? So let's start with just... What's what's the bad parts about the game? Let's start with the, the negative parts. Zero, since you were the first, the, the last one to speak, well, why don't you tell us what do you think are the bad parts about gameplay in Star Citizen right now? <laughs> I don't know if that was intentional or not. That was hilarious, though, if it was. Um, 30K check. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's let's go to you gal before he comes back i can start uh, if you want yeah hey i'm back am i back you're back okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, that was that was, that was uh beautiful it was beautiful there we go tactical 30k love it <laughs> uh because i was just saying what was the worst parts about star i, I want to know what your the worst parts about uh star citizen gameplay as a game right now and you just were like and then crashed so it was it was, it was perfect perfect timing uh, can you hear us? Is it, is there a... I can hear you. Yes. Okay, Sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, so, yeah. so I think the the worst part of the game. I mean, it's actually it's not the thirty Ks anymore. Ironically, uh, uh, is for me like I and I complain about this once in a while, but like CIG has been making a lot of FPS content, mm -hmm. huge events that pushes into FPS, Xeno Threat, uh, Jump Town, um, 
the Siege of Ors, and three out of the four events are very heavy FPS. Um, and FPS desync is worse than I think maybe it's ever been uh, on in the game. Maybe there's been some other times, but it's been horrible for, uh, I mean, a long time, more than a year, but it's been, like, particularly in 317.234 or whatever upcoming, it's been horrific. Uh, I mean, I was hunting somebody at Security Post Korea last night, and it just happened to be, he was literally, he'd stand there, and then he was just standing there, and then I'd see him, like, jump up here. And, like, he was running around on his screen, I was running around on my screen, but we were both just teleporting for each other into different locations that we were running to. And it's like, you can't have FPS combat like that. You can't have FPS interactions like that. So I think for me, that's probably the worst of the worst right now is the FPS desync issues. Okay. So just, just yeah, the bugs and, or not yeah. necessarily bugs, that's the well, it wouldn't be, technical aspect. It wouldn't be so bad if they weren't pushing us into FPS gameplay constantly. Yeah. You know, I mean, bunkers, events, all these different things push us into this FPS gameplay where the desync is so horrific that it's almost, I mean, it's, you can't rely on anything you see. So that's no. pretty rough. <laughs> Gal, you're, what are the worst parts of the game for you? Even to add on to what Zero is saying about FPS. I mean, honestly, like I've, I've just gotten off a two month break um, off of Star Citizen. And mm -hmm. it's f literally for that reason. Um, the desync or FPS is in the worst state it's ever been. And I, I've never had it before. Like, like, there's, it's weird. It's like they've changed the tick rate on which even damage um, is registered. So I don't know if you guys have done any PvP bounty hunting or anything, but basically it used to be really laggy and desynky before where there's a lot of peekers advantage. So the key was you play aggressive, you win. That's pretty much it. If you if you push them, you win. Um, and even if you're defending a site, you can stay around a corner, wait till they come down the elevator, for instance, in the in the bunker, and then push that corner, and then you get the peekers advantage. But now it's like you'll push someone, unload an entire mag on them, and then you'll stand there for a second and then be like, oh, you both traded every single time. And it's, yep. I, 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 I played a little bit of FPS again the other day, um, did a bounty. I was hugging the right side of the elevator in the bunker, and I went to just peek out to see where he was. And I went, bang. And then it was like, Doo -doo 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 -doo, and I was dead behind a wall. Yeah. And I was like, you, uh, like I've, I mean, I've shot somebody and and like literally watch their body fall and then after they've hit the ground i hear t -t 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 -t, and i take a bunch of damage and get down to it. and then we're just laying there <laughs> trading yeah, it's and it's like, super awkward <laughs> it's hard um, because but they, it pushes you into scummy gameplay as well because you can totally abuse the advanced cam to peek around corners and stuff. is there a gun again he crashed again i don't know what's going on it's weird zero technical um, difficulties yeah it's weird because it wasn't. Weird. Yeah, like, it, it only waited. It waited until we were we were starting to record. That's when that's when all these technical difficulties popped up. Not before, just perfectly. Yeah. Like it's just the way it goes. Um, uh. I, I I will. Well, well, let's let's flip it on the other side, and and I'll ask you. Start with this this one, Gal. What are the best parts of Star Citizen as a game? The best parts. Oh, here he is. He is back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think um, you know, al along with the worst things, it's like. I think we're only frustrated with it because it's been better before. Okay. Um, and there's plenty of problems with Star Citizen, but sometimes, you know, devs change. So you have a coder has to go into someone else's code and try and figure out what's going on. So, mm -hmm. you know, I must iterate every time I criticize Star Citizen. Don't, don't attack the devs. Don't attack the devs. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the number one. Yeah. yeah as far they, as good things. Good things. Oh, yeah, so, what are the best parts about Star Citizen to, for you and your, your experience? Do you guys remember that first time that, uh, you know, you, you first get into the game, you're in your hab, you go outside, you're like, okay, there's a hallway here. And say you're at level and you step out and you just see this enormous world. I think one of the most amazing things for me um, for the game, which I take for granted these days, is the scale. Really, the scale and the sense of feeling that you're in a world, the immersion. Um, I think that's one of the the best things for me. Okay, just the the scale and the immersion. Yeah, it's like everything is huge and insane, and and space, and sci-fi, but it's believable. That's that's yeah, that's my favorite thing about Star Citizen. All right, zero. 
Uh, yeah, I'll probably echo some of that too. I think it's the reason I keep playing Star Citizen is mostly because it's not, it's just nothing quite like it. Um, in Tarkov, you drop into a match, it's a fade to black or fade, fade to you're, you're in, you know, uh, the, the world and then you extract and it's a fade to black in elite dangerous. You're in the ship. It's, it's great. You can go wherever you want to try to get out of your ship. It's a fade to black. Um, it, there's something about waking up in a bed walking through a station to your ship, calling your ship, getting in your ship, turning it on, like all these things, these these micro interactions that you have, which I think we we just kind of go through the motions as we do them. But the reality is that that's the things that's building your immersion for that gameplay session, you know? Which I think those things are why some of the game-breaking bugs were like, you're going up a staircase and you die kind of thing. Those become extra frustrating because you spent all this immersion time like being immersed in the game and then something takes you out of it like a staircase you know um but i think the yeah it's 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 the for me it's the micro immersions i think i mean and obviously the the player interactions are incredible you know i mean i've met every kind of person uh really put good people assholes uh yeah. people that i've you know i've i've friend requested on the spot because they're just so wholesome and, and it's so much fun to watch okay. and 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 be a part of you know so yeah, I think it's partially the, the micro immersion stuff, uh, which just no other game has, and then the the player interactions that you have. Let's uh, move on to to another pet aspect. What part would you like to see, other than say obviously the the like the desync issues? What parts <laughs> of like gameplay would you like to see fleshed out over the next year or so? so think things that are like uh, uh, deficient, uh, you know, uh, specific. Professions. Are you supposed uh, to be realistic or no? I, I mean, as as realistic as you can you can think of. Just the, the things that you would like to see to improve the experience, the gameplay experience, um, like for playing, not necessarily like bug fixing stuff like that, but additions to the game that would improve it. Start with you, Zero, on this one. Oh, uh, I think. Um, I, I compare mining in Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen often-ish uh, because the mining in Elite Dangerous is incredible. I mean, there's 10 different kinds of mining you can do. There's various different places you can go that you know, reliably give you better profit. I mean, there's just so much like immersion in the mining situation in, in Elite Dangerous that I feel like, you know, Star Citizen, it's point laser at rock until rock gets hot, rock blows up, <laughs> collect whatever's in it, right? Which is not the end of the world. Uh, it's still, you know, great fidelity and it's, you know, it, it, a lot of people enjoy that kind of Zen gameplay and stuff. Totally get it. Um, but I think just more depth of each type of gameplay. And I, I know that they're going to do that, but that's kind of the thing that I would love to see is just more depth to mining, more depth to salvage when it comes out. You know, salvage is going to come out with just hull stripping at first, but being able to like crack out a module and put it on my ship and then go sell that shit, you know, um, that to me is probably the paramount, like the paramount thing that I'd like to see is we have cool game loops uh, and, and, and a decent amount of them, although more is always better, but to deepen those game loops creates a place that it isn't a mile wide and an inch deep, you know, it's mm -hmm. a mile deep and a mile wide, hopefully, you know, and I know that's tough, but yeah. Okay. So just more, more involved and more specialized gameplay for each, for each loop. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's probably. Yeah. I have been talking about this since, I think, uh, what was the last event? Well, you know, do you remember the AV equipment bug before the wipe? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it kind of got me thinking and I was like, hey, this bug happened. Yeah, that shouldn't be like that. But it created a lot of gameplay um, because there was pirates interdicting cargo runners there was people protecting cargo runners because pirates were interdicting them. Um, I think if I could make one change, I would say it would be to cargo. And the reason is, I mean, a lot of people are like, why would they fix cargo? Because cargo doesn't need to be, like, Quanta isn't in yet, so they don't need to test it, so they don't need people to do it. But I, I think it opens up a lot of different gameplay. If I was to change it, I would make... Like, for instance, if you go and buy medical supplies now, I think it's like, what, it's like a 100... AUEC per SEU or something like that. Like it's it's or maybe less than that. I don't know. It's dirt cheap. Mm -hmm. Make the buy-in for cargo way more expensive. Like to for instance, to now to fill up a um a C2 with like Hayden Knight, uh 
it, it's not going to run your bank account dry. I think that the problem is it's too cheap. Everyone's going to be just, oh, I want to use a C2 to trade because that's the most amount of profit I can get. I think the margins should be smaller and that the buy-in is way more expensive. The buy-in is, sorry, my brain is like going in circles. I can't. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> um, you're, you're saying, um, you're saying the, the, the buy-in for trading should be higher. The, uh, yes. the, the profit margin is slimmer. And uh, so there's a lot more of a risk reward. So you don't. Yeah. You don't want one. people making just unbelievable amounts of money. But for instance, if you fill up a C2 and it costs you like 30 million, I think that should be a thing. And then you maybe get like, uh, like two, three million profit. Because then it makes it have value. And then people will start tra trading more often in smaller ships as well. Like, have you ever seen someone trade in a Reliant Core? Like, no. never. You know what I mean? And it would open up opportunities for that. Newer players could get into it. Medicals, there we go. 1740 AUEC for meds. Costs, it costs about the same as a hot dog. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I, and, I, and then also increase the, um, the supply and demand. And I don't think that completely ruins price fixing has never worked in history. Well, it, it's obviously not. Yeah, I think increase, increase cost and increase supply and demand. Um, and lower margins and you'll see a lot more gameplay you'll see pirates trying to actually rob cargo people because at the moment what they just spam jump town for gameplay otherwise people don't play the game it's like wh what are we doing like uh, it's gotten to the point where like we did jump town with zero the other day but unless it's like an organized group that wants to grab boxes people just show up there and kill people they don't care about the actual event anymore it's just because there's people there i, I think it's stale it makes it really stale whereas if you that cargo thing, people go anywhere. People go to heaps of different locations. So, uh, like the the quanta sort of system to be more fleshed out, like where you have the supply and demand, and you have. Well, I mean, they don't the have quanta right now, and in you know, in a perfect world, yeah, we get quanta. That'd be awesome. But for now, it's like they could artificially change it and just be like, hey, add supply and demand, add add cost and um, lower margins, and it would make people. That would make mining too profitable. Uh, I mean, you could tweak it, right? Mm -hmm. It's 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 just something small. That it's it's not even that big. It's literally changing numbers, and it could. I feel like it could create a lot of gameplay, and it's and it's interaction between players as well. More reactive rather than just passive in terms of them actively. Yeah, it's not like things hey, up and down go here and kill people. Like oh, okay. nine tells are attacking again, and it just it makes it have less value as well. The events I remember. First time Xenothreat came out and you got a badge in Spectrum and it was like this crazy event. And now it's just like, oh, Jump Town's on every week. Yeah. So, okay. I don't know. Yeah, I think um, I'll piggyback on that for a split second. Sure. It's funny that you mentioned the commodity prices and stuff. There's actually a journal entry called Price Commodity... I can't remember what it's called. Commodity Price something something. Update, mm -hmm. I think. And it updates like, I don't know, every half hour or something. Um, and it, those prices... At first, I don't know if they still do, but they would fluctuate. And you and it would send you to buy the weirdest stuff. It would be like, go buy spirits, like liquor, at this place, and then this place is buying it high. And then those things would change over time. Now, they were kind of randomized, but it's like CIG has this thing where they're like, we have this Rubik's Cube in our hands of all the tools we need to make trade interesting in Star Citizen, but we're just going to set it there on the table. And that's been so frustrating to me since that price commodity tool in the journal entry came out that it's like you have a bunch of commodities here that you can clearly change and edit and, and you have them so that they're changing prices at different locations and taking people to like a moon, like Walla, and mm -hmm. then like, oh, I got to take this to, you know, Microtech to get a good sale and I got to get there quick, you know, and then pirates could look at that and be like, all right, traders like, are going to hey, be on be this here. trade route. And then if you don't want a pirate after you take the second best profit, you know, instead of the first best profit or whatever. And I think that would create so much immediate gameplay messing with that commodity price tool and just giving it like good. I mean, I don't care if you fill up a C2 and you want to make a couple million or maybe not a C2, but you could even make that so that it's good profits, but very low, like per player amounts, you know? So like it's good profits, but some guy in an Avenger Titan, you know, is going to take his eight SCU and run that route, you know, and maybe get pirated yep. or whatever. I think that would add so and, much gameplay from a trade perspective, yeah. 
Yeah, with the lower margins, even if it costs more, you're going to have a guy in an Avenger Titan who takes 8 SEU. It's going to cost him like 20k, but he's still going to get like a couple grand off it, which is about the same as a box mission. And it'll probably take more time. Uh, I don't know. I, it just seems like a no-brainer for me. Uh, and I mean, like, I of course, I, I mean, I'm in a pirate org. My main org is a pirate org. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just... Criminal. No one's been playing. <laughs> no one's been playing. We do skirmishes with other orgs, and that's literally it. Um, so when that when that price journal index came out, we literally called it Hop Town because we like you know it's Jump Town, but we decided to call it Hop Town because it created these mini little Jump Towns. Jump towns. And we we, yeah. we expected it, and we were like, "This is gonna change the game." Like we were super excited about it, and then they just did nothing with it. <laughs> it was yeah. so frustrating. And now you don't you can't even fill up a C two if you sit there for three hours. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, all right. Gillian, let's, man? let's. Let's move on to the the last part before we move into the events, the, the the kind of discussion. I'll start with you on this one, Gal, which is um, as a game, would you suggest people jump into Star Citizen now uh, to as something that they play regularly and that kind of stuff? If you had asked me two months ago, I'd have lost my mind. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, like despite whatever tantrum I have with the game, I'd say yes, hard yes. Okay. Um, I've been playing for two years, which is not like I joined on the Wednesday during IAE in 2020. That's uh, the first day I ever played. Um, and I've done all of the missions, every mm-hmm. single one, except for, I think, um, Ruto's quest line, uh, whichever the one you have to hand to the drugs. I haven't done that one mm-hmm. yet, but I've done every bunker mission. I've done all the Idris missions, uh, everything, every event. I the reason I really like and and tend towards interacting with players and doing FPS stuff is because I have to create my own content now. Doing bunkers over and over again to bots that are going like it, it's it's not as fun anymore. Um, but for new players, they haven't done any of that. They don't know anything about ship components, weapons, armor. Um, they like even doing the Twitch timeline, the Twitch uh, missions. She kind of like rips you off at, off at first and kind of tries to screw you over and mm-hmm. gives you big crime stats for like no reason. And you're like, oh, shit. And then you get up there with her missions and she's like, hey, break my homie out of, out of this uh, caterpillar prison. And you have to go in, find codes. It's a nice complex mission. There's some awesome mission lines in there. Um, so, yeah, new players, yeah, 100% would suggest it. Um, I think if you're going to suggest it to new players... They need to have someone to hold the hand a little bit because mm-hmm. the time that I played on that Wednesday and spent 20 minutes being like, where's the button to get out of the hangar? It was uh... <laughs> <laughs> not an uncommon, was not uncommon. Lying around like <laughs> so disorientated, but um, really, really fun. New game. Like as we were saying, Zero said those player interactions where you, you find someone and you add them immediately. I found this kid named Emerald Gamer. He's a 14-year-old Aussie, and I found him at the ship terminals, and he was hot micing and he was raging. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, it's not claiming my ship. And and yeah. and then he was like jumping around, bumping into people on purpose because he was like annoyed. And I was like, oh, he stored his ship. I bet it's on like this pad that normally spawns a ship first. I go there and his ship's broken into. I was like, oh no. Ended up helping the kid playing with him for like five hours and like I've known him for like eight months now, and I just watched his him do his school project in Minecraft. It's like these friends that you make during the game is it's it's an insane experience. In my second week of playing the game, I was at uh, Everest Harbor. Um, never played with anyone. None of my friends play Star Citizen. Completely alone, and I saw four dudes at the hot dog stand eating hot dogs, and I was like, "Wow, that is so damn cool." Walked over there, grabbed a hot dog, and stood next to them and started eating. Back then, VoIP did not work at all. <laughs> and they were like, hey, who's this guy standing next to us um, eating a hot dog? And literally, I, that's my org. That's the org I'm in. Same dudes yeah. from two years ago. And and like people come and go. And um, it used to not be a pirate org. We were basically dedicated to helping new players. Mm-hmm. Um, but they were just doing a truck stop after, on, after a big mining run. And it was like, that's just crazy. Like that, I just walked up to them and ate a hot dog, and that's friends that I've had for years now. Uh, it's you know the community and the the interaction with players is 
insane. I, don't, I went on a tangent there, but <laughs> no, I mean, it's, that's, that's a good point. Like, like uh, interactions with other people is as much of a gameplay aspect as the game itself as, as it's like, it's mining or an MMO, you know, yeah. it's like, I, it's like the, what I consider to be like old wow, classic wow. People used to go into the game and not go on discord or team speak or well, discord wasn't around, but team speak or, or mumble. They used to go into WoW and be like, hey, my buddy's online and go hang out in game. And that's what I want to see from Star Citizen. It's like Star Wars Galaxies. It's um, mm. it's just an amazing opportunity. It's the game. So I would definitely suggest it to new players, yeah. Because okay. it can yeah. give you something amazing. What I, f I don't remember who said it. I think it might have been Moist Noodle. But he was like, if I buy a game, I want it to correlate to how many hours I get. So if I send six, spend 60 bucks on a game, I want 60 hours out of it. And man, I've got... <laughs> Probably at least a thousand hours out of Star Citizen, and I've yep. probably spent about a grand as well. So <laughs> it yep. evens out. Uh, Zero, would you suggest the game to uh, a new person coming in, or so someone who was looking at the game? Would you sit there and go, "Yes, and play this game"? If you, if you, if you're wanting to try to play this game, like as a main game, like yeah, as a, a Tarkov or a, a, a Civilization or a COD or or whatever, whatever main game, you know, or not main necessary main game, but like. A, a rotation game a game to play as a game right so i actually i get that question from time to time i mean mm -hmm. obviously right um and i'm sure gal has to i'm looking at star citizen should i get it um and my answer is always yes but mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it's, there's always the but there <laughs> uh and it's like but you have to have a powerful pc right i mean we all know this you have a laptop. that should get better <laughs> as, <look> out. <laughs> should get better as gen 12 uh vulcan that kind of stuff you know that that should help but it's always going to, you know, it's, it's a beautiful game. It has lots of things to load and lots of things, you know, it's, it's, you're going to need a powerful PC to play it. It's in early access. So, or that's what I say, it's in development. So it's going to change. There's going to be weird bugs. Stuff's, you know, not always going to be the same. Just keep that in mind. Um, and, uh, you know, you have to be okay with some bugs. Like if you want a polished experience, it ain't the game for you yet is what I almost always tell people stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it's like, yes, it's an amazing experience. But if, if you aren't in the place as a gamer where you're ready for the problems that we talked about that come with it, you won't have that experience. You'll have an experience where you focus on, the, on all those things that frustrate you, and then your experience will be a very negative one. And to those people, I would say, hold off, you know? Yeah. That's okay. just me, but. Uh, the next question I, I'd have, let's move on to the next topic, which is events. So... Let's start off with the the positive of events. Zero, we'll start with this one. What do you like about the event system in Star Citizen? Well, I think the obvious part is they bring people together. Okay. Um, the you know it's 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 very community focused. Obviously, it gives the uh, it gives the development or the game uh, and CIG a lot of like great publicity. Like they're building these really cool things. Um, there's a lot of internal wins. So like the racetrack, for instance, was like uh, the um, Snake pit, snake pit was like a guy just built that in his mm -hmm. spare time, you know, uh, and the PTV racetrack was born of that cool win, you know, and they're like, let's get a PTV racetrack in here, you know, so like you find those cool, like surprise, this worked out really well kind of moments. Um, and they just come across as these awesome wins and getting to watch Star Citizen's development during that time is just so cool uh, to see those things kind of happen as they happen, you know, rather than like hearing a story about how the snake pit came to be. It's like I was there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when they put it in, it was really cool. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Gal, uh, the, the, the highs, the, the best, best parts about the uh, Star Citizen's event system as it stands. Yeah, I did complain about the events before, mm -hmm. but they're so damn fun. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to do Siege again because I've done it 20 times and I went and did Siege again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I mean, you know, you can find different ways to do it. If, man, if we could have Siege, even as like, I don't know, uh, Crusader Security wants to do a training program for mercenary, mm -hmm. I don't know. More we, frequently. The most rather... fun I've, one of the most fun I've ever had in Star Citizen, um, we went into, we were literally waiting at the platform for the event to start. We're the first in there. And we did the entire mission as a group of five. Oh jealous oh man <laughs> so jealous i don't know I was, why like everyone on our server was so far behind what are you gonna say no i was just I'll, I'll say in a minute i did it um i don't remember who i did it with exactly i think my mate bruce wasn't there but 
man, like we we got every single um, lieutenant. We went and did the extra part, which gives you the extra money, shutting down the hack. The last one, we killed the last guy and the mission finished and it didn't bug out. It was just like, it was so fun. It was so stressful. We all had an ungodly amount of injuries. Um, like, it was just, it was insane. It was so much fun. Um, and it was hard, but I think that's good. Five man, five man group. Like, if you could party up with like a group of up to twelve, and 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 go and run that shit, it would be like, oh my god, it was so much fun. Um, and even like a swarm of ships come of uh after the third platform when you go to admin, we still managed to survive. Um, I think our pilot died. Some people died. People ended up um, stranded and having to fight their way out back to the group, and it was just like, uh, I don't know if you ever, if you guys ever see Nutley in any chat, ask her about the time we did the five man um, siege of Oris, and she'll go nuts. Yeah, but just like Xeno threat for the first time, insane. There's FPS. Yeah. There's different stages. Um, you're going in and out of places. There's uh, stuff for everyone to do. Um, I think that was one of the the main things that I really liked about um, Xeno is because it was there was a spot for everyone. There was cargo runners, there was mm. FPS, and there was ships. And I think um, Star Citizen. I mean, what they have like one or two people working on missions for um, the PU. It's not a lot of people. Yeah, and yeah. the job they're doing amazing. is yeah. goddamn amazing. Like, you, yeah, shout out to Elliot. Crappy, yeah. yeah, there's crappier <laughs> store lines in AAA games. I'll just say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're they're making these events within, like they're trying to stay within the bounds of the lore that's been set up, and then future mm -hmm. planned lore as well. You know, so it's so much red really tape, and they still manage yeah. to pull it, pull that stuff off. Amazing. Yeah, the and amount they have to think about. It's important to also note that we've had pretty much a a, a new event every patch, every major patch this year. Mm. So yeah. over the last year, we've had an event for every major patch. I think the only exception would was um, IAE or no Invictus, but Invictus itself is its own event. Right. So, uh, yeah. Uh, you were going to say something else there, Zero? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I We had this cool idea once where it was like, okay, Siege of Wars and can't happen forever, right? Like, it's yeah. going to not be a thing in the future at some point because you can't just have the nine tails attacking wars and over and over <laughs> and over and over forever. Time. Like yeah. Eventually you'd think the UEE would figure it out. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so what I was thinking is you could turn Siege of Wars into a Star Marine module mm. where all those platforms are in a, you know, a packet, right? Um, and then you could queue up with randoms. And as soon as the group got to 12, it would launch with a Mobile maximum of say, with, with a maximum of say like 24 or something like that. Uh, or if you queued up with like 16 of your friends, you would just launch immediately, right? Uh, in a party. And then you could launch at or and it would load you at Orzin and like go buy your gear, get ready, get up to the and go do the whole thing as a group with nobody else there in a like sealed environment that would perform so much better with like no desync. It'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, like, uh, I think that'd be a great direction because you could people still want to play Siege of Orzin. Do you like two years like five years from now? some mm -hmm. new player is going to hear about Siege of Wars and be like, I want to play that, you know? And so you got to yeah. have a place for it, you know, I think. Especially because they're going to use those platforms, the Wars and platforms for missions in the future. So you can't just have them be destroyed all the time. Well, <laughs> I mean, know? like, if you look at it in a lore perspective, right? In the current day, we have video games that uh, go over the events of World War II. And it could mm -hmm. just be like, hey... This event was a crazy event that happened on Orison. Come and relive it and be a space yes, marine. Exactly. One of the like, that's you know literally I mean? that's literally theaters of war. That's the entire yep. point of theaters so of war. Awesome. Get into like, a get into a sim pod and re relive these cool events, like when yeah. Xeno threat attacked. You know, uh, mm -hmm. or when you know Nine Tails lockdowns could always happen. I guess, but you get the idea. Um, yeah. So so like a yeah. theaters of war, but more but less pvp and more pve or just whatever, yeah. whatever the, the previous the previous events were yeah so, yeah it's a good idea oh, imagine like a pvp they like <laughs> one team's trying to stop it and another like there's a player lieutenants ah mm -hmm. don't even i'm not even gonna go there but <laughs> so uh with all that that good stuff out of the way let's talk about the bad stuff uh gal what are the bad parts of the events stale repeated 
Um, and it's not necessarily the team's fault. I think it's just because we don't have a lot of gameplay. I mean, if we counted every time Jump Town's been on in the last year, <laughs> you'd be counting for a while. <laughs> um mm-hmm. it's yeah that's that's pretty much it like the the events themselves aren't bad at all um uh, the events are amazing but when it's over and over again they kind of lose the value um it, yeah it loses the value because like i remember when xeno threat was on as i said before it was like holy shit i have to take the day off work because we have to save uh Jericho. Jericho. like yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, and and then you get in there, and 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 Rowena Dooley, Anna, <laughs> yeah, um, is just like, we need you for the da da da. And I don't know if you guys have listened to the voice lines when you do those missions, um, for zero for Xeno Threat, but at first it was like, um, it's gonna be rough out there. Like, good luck, da da da. But once you've done it like once or twice, she's like, welcome back. It's good to have an experienced member on board and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And it was just like. Oh, I feel special. Like, yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. really cool. Except for sure. when you get yelled at for the D- D- Luther mix or whatever. But, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, free, she, more Dane Luther mix. She but, she says that depending on your rep your rep level. Like, if you have the highest rep level, uh, she'll say she just like like it's always good to have a veteran on board. Someone's done this yeah. before. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's so, an old standover. And, and, like, if you go into a shop, they'll say like, mm-hmm. "Hi, welcome to the store." And if you leave the shop and come back a minute later, she'll be like, "Welcome back." Like, yeah. that's something that's you know, it's there's these triggers to. At the A, I kind of yeah. remember. Uh, all right, let's let's uh, zero. What are the worst parts about the event system? Uh, well, we touched on desync a little bit, so I'll try to stay away from that. Um, I, you know, most of them are half baked. Nine Tails Lockdown is amazing. If you guys don't know, Nine Tails Lockdown has a red mission and a blue mission, and that's it's an opposed dynamic event. Like red players are meant to shut it down and win and get paid mm-hmm. to win. Um, and uh it just doesn't work that way like the reds can't win it doesn't really complete uh you know it's so like nine tails lockdown is a perfect example of a, a dynamic event that is close to being insanely epic and it's still fun it's cool to go there um but it's kind of just so half-baked that there's certain aspects of it like if you just don't know there are cracked uh star fairs out there that you can find and loot medical supplies and bring those to the station but they only give you like one or two SCU, so it's like not worth doing. But like, it's just glazed over because it just wasn't finished, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so that's kind of one thing. And Siege of Warzone obviously has all of its bugs where oh, the man. lieutenants will spawn in walls and all these different crazy things. It's just like, you can spend three hours on the event and then the last lieutenant spawns in a wall and nobody can complete it and you, everybody just leaves. And There was uh, a bug where like people yeah, would kill Mendo Ren before the last lieutenant and then it would just completely fuck the mission. It was like, bruh. Yeah, it's it's uh it's those things that kind of start to make you feel like man, it's just it's this close, close to being such an awesome event, and it's just because it just wasn't left in the oven quite long enough, and they wanted to get it out, and then the, it kind of has been forgotten by the people fixing the bugs a little bit, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't feel like they're actively developing these dynamic events to continue to make them better, and to get them over that hump of of problems to where they're awesome. Uh, they're just kind of replaying them, you know, as they are. Mm-hmm. Like, if they played Siege of Orison today, you would have just as much of a chance of a lieutenant spawning in a wall as if they played it two months ago or a month ago, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, th- and that kind of just, like, when, when Siege of Orison comes around, I go, ah, I mean, if I go there, there's a 40% chance the mission fails because of something stupid that's going to piss me off. <laughs> And so I think it fails from something that's not in your control. It's like, right. Yeah. And that's, we talked about that earlier. It's just something that you have all this immersion that's built up in your gameplay session. And then something happens that snaps you out of it and you go, Oh, I'm playing a game. Ding it. You know, (laughs) like it's it's extra frustrating because of all that immersion that was built up uh, before that thing, you know, Lieutenant spawned in the wall. Well, now there's like 30 people here that can't finish the mission they were on. And it's just mass disappointment. So, yeah. yeah, things like that. I'd say that's probably the worst part. It um, doesn't feel like they're being actively, like, developments improved. being actively put. Yeah, actively improved. Yeah. They're just kind of rerunning them at the moment. Can I do a question? <laughs> Go for it, Gal. <laughs> what was your favorite bug in an event? <laughs> Me or, or Paul? Both of you. <laughs> oh, Paul, you want to go first? You got one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, my favorite bug in an event was uh, where there was part in Xenothreat where if you destroyed the Idris, 
before it, like when the, the reinforcements interest came in to attack the station, if you destroyed it before it jumped out, it would break the mission. So <laughs> by being efficient and able to, 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 to destroy them, it was effectively like you do, you've congratulations. You've, you've ended all of the Xeno threat, but, but you know, uh, but I'm not going to pay you because you you you, <laughs> you 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 defeated this 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 uh, this invasion single handedly. But bye, you know. Yep. Uh, yeah. How about you, Zero? Uh, my favorite one is probably a Nine Tails lockdown bug, where this is fairly early on in Nine Tails lockdown, where in the last uh, and spoiler alert, I guess, uh, in the last phase of the event, it spawns an enemy fleet. Uh, it'll spawn like. Over time, you get like you fight like eight to twelve hammerheads. There's a couple of Idrises, whatever, right? Um, and you have to destroy all these. Well, the spawn thing got out of control, and it spawned <laughs> 120 hammerheads at least. I mean, it was hundreds of ships flying around, and my FPS was like my FPS was like eight, and we ended up killing them all. It took us like three hours. It, it was, was like wild. the battle for Coruscant. Damn, da da da, and you see the yeah. ships fly over, and there's just like venators, like <laughs> seriously. <laughs> yeah, it looked like it looked like the fleet of ships from spoiler alert, uh, the Last Jedi, yeah. uh, where there was just like mm. hundreds mm. of ships it flying. Was just like <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, and it was what? Yeah, I think we we did finish a lot of them with torpedoes. It was back when the Inferno before it had its change. It was a little better, uh, and the Ion was a little bit better too. So we had some heavy hitting ships, and we were taking them out left and right. But it was just like, and as we kept killing them, we kept noticing like, oh, I gained another FPS. Kill a couple more hammerheads, <laughs> and then like the I FPS improved a little bit. <laughs> it was crazy, man. It was crazy. Uh, chat, chat brings up a good point. I would say that, that would be my favorite one. The entire impetus for the event system itself, which is jump down. The original jump down, the 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 screw up of the zero, uh, the decimal point where they ch change the decimal point just wrong enough to make Widow incredibly uh, valuable. Yeah, yeah. That that was <laughs> changed everything. Changed everything. So, um, yeah. Well, let's 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 uh, last one for in uh, last question that I'll have for you before we move into the question and answer session, uh, and I'll start with you on this one, Gal. What would you ask for if if you were to um, sit down with, you know, uh, CIGs and uh, CIG and tell them directly what you'd want to see in the future uh, for events. What type of events would you want to see in the future for Star Citizen? What events? Wow. Okay, that's a hard one. Um, if we're looking at parameters, not like literally just like, hey, I want this to happen and that. Yeah. I, I mean, like, really... Like like a specific yeah, gameplay reason, style. Yeah, or, yeah, right. Or so the reason I like Nine Tails lockdown and the reason I like um Siege a little bit, but you see less of it, and Xenothreat is because everyone's involved. There's a part for every different kind. Like it's not like, oh, you're a ship pilot and you've never gotten out of your ship in two years. Well, too bad. <laughs> Get in line. Yeah. Um I I I want events where there is availability for everyone to be able to do something. Um, cargo runners, even maybe miners. Like, I mean, scrapping will be a thing in the future. Um, uh, like have a have a good side pirates. Like uh, these dynamic things where it's like there's a set mission, but so much stuff can happen. I mean, like even look at siege. Like you have these set missions, and then people went there and were like, "Hey, I'm gonna kill other players." And while that was like kind of like scummy, people would then gear up and be like, "We will need a." band together and kill this player that has a crime stat now and it was like it was, it was fun it, mm. it created something different um so i think the more a uh, variety of like um you know what i mean like the more mm. available it is for miners to be able to do their thing salvages engineers fps people medics just have i, I like events that have something for everyone to do okay and zero. then you know people can try something new as well. Like I, uh, mm. I never. Hey, Gal, really... he said zero. Okay. I'm, just <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm with you on that though, 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 Gal, because like uh, I learned how to use tractor beams because of uh, because of jump of uh, Xeno threat. I yeah, had I, I... no use for z tractor beams. Now people look at me when I when I stream the game like how how quickly can you move boxes? I'm like Xeno threat. You gotta move yeah. these things fast. <laughs> you gotta move yeah. them fast, especially when they're gonna blow up in a certain amount of time. I yeah. mean, I 
I used to people look at me like I I'm very like FPS centric now. I barely dogfight. I sit in an Andromeda, and good pilots come at me, and then I'm like, ooh, tickle, you yeah. tear away. Um, but I used to just be in my ship. I never got out. I never like before before the bunker rework with loot and stuff. I barely did FPS ever. Mm-hmm. It was not, and and now it's like my main thing. Like, it, and it was because Xenothreat went in, and they were like, "Someone needs to go inside," and everyone was like, "Fuck that!" And <laughs> I was like, "All right, I'll do it." Like, <laughs> and that's literally how I started in loving FPS in Star Citizen. Besides DC, but yeah, yeah. yeah. And can we talk a pause for just a second? And can we talk about how well the tractor beam works? At, on its first iteration and has yeah. really never had massive bugs. I bet see yeah, like whoever developed the tractor beam, I'm 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 pushing for a Nobel Peace Prize, to be honest. <laughs> I just like it works so well and it always has. It's like the most reliable thing in Star Citizen is the tractor beam right now. Yeah. But <laughs> anyway. I, yeah. I, I honestly though, I think I think uh it, it show goes to show you that when CIG has like things that that are in the game to support gameplay when yeah. CIG has gameplay they nail gameplay and gameplay aspects and most of the yeah. problems that y'all have been, have been talking about is like technical you know incomplete missions incomplete or, or back-end right. problems with, with stuff but when you actually have the gameplay when you when the ai works when the when when the missions are running properly uh it's fun it's engaging you want to go back and do it again so you know yeah that, that, that's uh that's what I'm yeah. saying. That- to answer the question, I guess, uh, I would like to see events. So Nine Tails Lockdown kind of touches on this, where a big part, there's like two kind of missions. One of the missions is combat. The other mission is trade. Um, but the trade is fairly simplistic, blah, 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 blah. Um, I think I would love to see an event where it's more multifaceted, um, where it's like, hey, for some reason, we need a bunch of hate night gem, whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. So like people that go out and like go rock mining. Or and and we could really use extra quantanium to fuel up our javelin at, uh, which is stationed at Mikkel One or whatever. Mm-hmm. And the javelin, like Mikkel One, is out of quantum fuel, and we need to get that quantum fuel, you know, to or, or to get that javelin across the system to, you know, Cruel One with long ways. And we need to fuel that sucker up with quantanium before it can take it can make the jump. Or this could be even a Stanton to Pyro kind of thing. Like we're going to send mm. a javelin to Pyro, and it needs a bunch mm. of quantanium for that. Here's an event: go mine the quantanium, and you know get it here, and we will quickly refine it. We'll pay you for it, and then the javelin will be off when that mission. The Xeno threat kind of has that a little bit, where it's like we need to restock with this, this, and this. But I don't like the fact is with Xeno threat, there's just these boxes of Diluthermex. And, you know, the other ones, um, I mean, it's, it's, it gives you something to do. It's like kind of a plot MacGuffin, these boxes, but it would be kind of cool if it was like, we need to restock with Quantanium. We need to restock with medical supplies. We need to restock with scrap for, you know, fixing our fleet. And we need to restock, uh, you know, with Laranite for like repairing our hulls. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can go and buy those things in Stanton or mine those things in Stanton in different ways, uh, and bring them to that location and it could even be a multi location I mean, I'm just spitballing here, but it could be like, okay, the fleet's going to move here to get stuff from this station, and now you bring stuff to this station, blah, 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 blah. Um, but just something like that where it involves more people, like kind of what Gal, echoing a little bit what Gal was saying too, of just like having everybody be involved, um, but having everybody be involved with game loops, not just with things you do, right? So, mm-hmm. like, I don't mind if it's mostly in ships. It doesn't bother me that much, but it would be cool if, like, a, a miner could be like, oh... You know, that mission is get my mining chops on and be a part of this thing. You know, I yeah. think that'd be cool. Yeah, I've, I've always had an idea of uh, and that kind of like, uh, like I like that idea because that, that seems very similar to elites of community events when they. Yes, do those community, community goals. goals. Yes. Where Elite like, Dangerous can, does great community goals for the most part. Where, where um, you can just play the game you want to play. It's just yep. they're incentivized for you to do that with something like building a new station or something. Because like I've always, I've always had an idea of a, of a ground base. Because one of the things that we don't really have is a use for ground vehicles to have like a blockade system where like where you have the Nine Tails or some other group has taken control of the exterior of Lorville and you're you have to run supplies through the blockade or through through this uh, uh, this this heavily armed area. So you have to have trucks or you have to have or you have to have uh, vehicles. You have to have tanks. 
and you can't really fly 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 ships around because or you can but you have to deal with the anti air and you have to deal with the people on the on foot with like rail guns trying to shoot at you and uh, so that you have to collect supplies so people have to bring medical supplies and food and yep. drop them off at a drop point and then other people have to escort uh, this 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 area there and then you have to unload it under fire and all that kind of stuff I mean Those you could even do it to the point where it's like we need P4ARs go loot them from bunkers yeah right like go go get them go source us like you know, we need, we need a thousand P4ARs, yeah. uh, you know, and players would, you know, go get them. And it could disable all P4AR sales in the system for the duration of the mission, let's say, so mm -hmm. that you have to go loot them, you know? Yeah, because the military's requisition them or something. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. All right, now we're just developers. We should stop. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean... Get yeah, on it, CIG. It, yeah, do it now, <laughs> please. Um, okay, cool. Uh, so thank you all for, 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 for hanging out and talking with us. We're going to move into the question and answer session. Make sure you check out zero state, uh, twitch.tv slash zero state and check out, uh, gal. It's, I can't type it out entirely cause it's, it's twitch.tv slash, uh, what is it? Uh, it's gal. pronounced gal. Uh, it's pronounced galag hero seven. Galag hero Maybe. seven. Yeah. G -A -L -L galag hero, just like my real name. Uh, <laughs> G A L L A G Hero Seven, uh, Twitch.tv uh, slash Galag Zero Galag Hero Seven. Galag Zero um, Seven, yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's a ship name. <laughs> Galag Zero Seven, yes. Galago Seven. Uh, and if you enjoyed this, uh, watch us live at uh, Twitch.tv slash The Astro Pub on Saturdays. Uh, we do this. We started this at about six p.m. Eastern, three p.m. Pacific, uh, eleven p.m. ish uh, British summertime. And uh, we'd love to have you come here and join us in the chat and ask your own questions. And for those of you who are watching after the fact on YouTube, please make sure you hit that subscribe button, like the video, comment down below your own thoughts on gameplay and Star Citizen and events. And if you are are right above Zero's head, the, if you're watching this after the fact, you'll see a little little thing pop up. And there you can click that and watch the question and answer session right away because I put them up at the same time. So you go ahead and click that and, and continue watching with the next video if you need to. Uh, but like I always say, thank, uh, thank you for watching and uh, my brain is fried now. So I'm going to, oh, <laughs> hope to see you someday in the black. <laughs>